Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Pointy Chins, where I will take you through my journey to develop a style that is hopefully very cool. And this episode is called Crickets. And the reason it's called Crickets is because I was doing these smaller figures, and I mentioned them in the last video, how I felt this was important. This drawing small was cool, because I could get the big picture in. And I called them stick figures, just like, oh, I'm drawing my stick figure things. And my friend said, oh, these look like crickets. So, crickets. I call them crickets now. And, yeah, the top row, bleh, very bleh, very messed up proportions. This guy's cool. And then I started with these. So, I have a video called How to Practice Drawing. And in it, what I talk about is what advice I would give someone starting out or give myself if I wanted to improve very fast. And the advice I give is to not just draw something once, but draw it multiple times. So if you're trying to figure out something, like let's say you're trying to figure out proportions, instead of doing one drawing um, and really, well, no, it's not really spending time to get it right, because you should get it right, but then do like 19 more, so you have like 20 drawings, and here we probably have more than 20 uh, poses. Uh, but the point is, I want to get this into my muscle memory. Now, there's some talk about, you know, is it good to do this? Shouldn't you just know stuff and um, not worry about muscle memory? And to that, I would say, uh, no, I think muscle memory is important. And the reason I know this is because... All my life, I've been drawing faces, um, like this, for example. Not like this face, but faces. And I find faces very easy to draw. And if someone was to ask me, why are faces so easy for you to draw? My answer wouldn't be because I um, looked up a very good tutorial on proportions of the face. It would be that I've drawn thousands and thousands of faces. Um, it's just by doing something over and over and over and over again, you get comfortable with it. You start to be able to see that, especially if you do it from different angles. You see it rotating. You can, you can move it whichever way you want it. So it's like, okay. Okay, so I have that with faces because I've spent my whole life drawing faces. Have I spent my whole life drawing poses? Have I spent my whole life drawing poses in this proportion, in this style? No. So what do I have to do? I have to build up my mileage fast. I need to do as many drawings as I can to get this muscle memory. Okay, so imagine I was doing a drawing and it's taking up the whole page. How long is that going to take me? It's probably going to take a little while compared to if I'm just doing a small drawing. So the thing is, if I draw a small drawing like this big, do I get the proportion? Yes. Do I get the general shapes? Yes. Do I get not maybe the detailed anatomy, but I get a lot of what I need in this small drawing. So it's much better for me to do this small drawing and get as much down and then do another one and then do another one and then do another one. So this was a huge breakthrough for me. So I started here and also the other thing is when you start you're kind of shaky and as you progress you get more confident, your lines get better, you learn how to simplify um, what is working, what is not working. So you can see, like, even within these, um, there's variation. It's small variation, but it's variation. And so, yeah, just a bunch of poses. And I think by this point, and this, and it's, I'm, this, this one's really nice. Well, I think so. Um, I'm getting much more comfortable. It's like, oh, okay, I can do this because I've done it a few times. You can see, though, what happens. I try the side view, and it's like, wow, that's really wonky. Okay, try another side view, and that's better. So then, what do I know? I know, okay, I've gotten better with my front views, but my side views definitely need work. So the next day, I started with a front view. Why? Because it's like a refresher. Okay, let's review what we, what we learned yesterday. So, okay, get this proportion. Am I liking it? Yes. Um, I didn't draw in the hands, which I'm noticing now because I made it a rule to tell myself always draw hands. Um, I guess I didn't have this rule at this point. Um, 
But now I certainly do. I always will draw the hands, even if it's like, well, you don't need to draw the hands, you've got the figure in. Um, I will still draw the hands because it's important. It's important to draw it so many times that it's not scary. Because why would you avoid drawing the hands? Well, it takes time, it's a bit harder. That's exactly why you should draw the hands. Draw the hands so that you don't feel scared, so that you've done this so many times that it's not an issue. So anyway, side view. Um, and there's probably more than 20 poses here. But yeah, start with the front view. Do what you've reviewed. Mm, okay, now try a side view. Another one, another one, another one, another one. Um, and of course I've had to kind of think about this. I'm researching, you know, what shapes work. This isn't coming out of nowhere, so it's not enough to just draw mindlessly. You have to put in your whole effort. You have to study. You have to study what, how does the rib cage go? How does the pelvis go? Where do things connect? Um, but then it's a matter of, you know, repetition. And so more, more things, more poses, more crickets. And another day. And it's like, okay, I didn't feel that comfortable with the side view. So, okay, let's do another day of side view. So again, start with, this isn't a front view, this is more of a three-quarter. And then get back to the side view, you know, nail this down. Because this still doesn't feel that natural to me. Um, try some crazy hair. Like, okay. Crazy hair, crazy hair. And this day... I think I was probably, this is October 20th, uh, 2014. I think I was on a plane when I did this. Yeah, because I remember I drew a baby. And there was a baby on the plane, so it's probably why. Uh, I have no idea what's going on here. But, um, yeah, it's another page of, of nonsense. And uh, male figure, right? I haven't done a male in a while. Okay, do him. Side view, uh, gesture is weak. Well, no, it's not that weak, but you know, try a hunched over gesture. Some hands, another figure. Trying to make sure I'm always um, here. I'm playing with the eyes, making them super tiny and far apart. Um, always refreshing, right? It's not enough to have learned something and to feel like I know it. You have to refresh. Uh, to, because even now, if I don't do something for a while, I will forget it. Um, so here's some more different types of di some different body types, and this is October 22nd. So I had some people saying, "Yeah, you never draw different body types. I've never seen you draw different body types." I would beg to differ because this was way before that video, and I was already drawing many different types of bodies. And it's just a matter of I want to get my basic proportion down first, and then explore. So I did this guy, and it's just very awkward. Um, I don't think he's flowing, he doesn't have nice shapes, and so I did a very little version, like, okay, so how would I make it better? How would I improve it? And I came up with this proportion, which I like a whole lot more. Again, it's the power of drawing small. When I draw small, I can get the entire pose, and if I was to do this digitally, I could draw this really small, and then just enlarge this, and then make a new layer, uh, turn down the opacity of this drawing, and then just draw over, but have the proportions. But I think it's also good to be able to draw bigger ones, and uh, the reason is that you train yourself to get things right. And so, when I'm drawing small, as I said, it's much easier to get the proportion. Now, how do I do it when I'm drawing big? Well, for me, one of the problems with drawing big is let's say I'm doing this figure, okay? So okay, we're doing this figure. The bigger your your picture, uh, the drawing is on the page, the more likely you're to start with like here and then go down and draw this part and go down and draw this part and then go down. And as you go down, you're not really paying attention to what came above. So you might end up with like a very small head and a body that's getting bigger and bigger as it goes down or the opposite or just you know, crooked proportions. And so what I do is I'll draw it, but as I'm drawing this, I'm actually looking at the head and then looking at the feet and then looking at the head and looking at the feet and like looking at the middle area. And I keep scanning like really fast as if it's um, the way, you know, computer screens used to work. They would refresh in 
they're constantly updating each, I don't know, like bar across the screen. Um, it would be like that. So I'm scanning it so I keep maintaining the proportion. So my eyes, even though I'm drawing here, it's like flicking up and down, up and down, up and down to make sure I'm looking at this as if it's a small image like this. So there's that. And I like this person's face. It's different, but still within the style. So that's cool, in my opinion. More crickets, yay! And more different body types, because it's like, okay, I drew the diff uh, more, you know, fat on the body, but it wasn't that good. I wasn't happy with it. And it's like, well, why aren't you, why aren't you as good at drawing that? Because you haven't drawn it as much. Okay, so let's do some more. So here, this one and this one, a bit skinnier. Okay, a bit more heavy. Mm trying to maintain the appeal. This one's head's a bit big, but the neck's super skinny. But whatever. Again, experiments. These aren't for show. These are just for you. I like this one, just because the star, I guess. And let's see. Here's some more guys. Um, so I wanted to draw one that doesn't have a super... Because I've been drawing the guys with super thin waist, and then this guy doesn't, so it's like, cool. And then this one is even more skinny, like, okay, do it with the really broad shoulders, but without the muscles. Okay, so that came out fine, it's interesting. More side views, because why not? And now I'm jumping between front view and side view, because, again, just for mileage, just building it up. Um, this is kind of getting out of proportion, um, and I'm getting tired. And so here, I'm like, uh, oh, see? Uh. Okay, more crickets. You see how this is going? This cricket thing? <clears throat> I'm going to be doing crickets for a while. So now, I don't really know the back view. Okay, let's do more back views. Let's get the gesture in the back view. What does this guy look like in a back view with his big ass uh, shoulder width and stuff? And actually, he has a very small ass, but um, anyway, right? more. I like this guy. He's got an axe and a mohawk, and this is a cool proportion. So it's like remembering. Like, okay, mark that down. This looked good. Do more of this, maybe. Mm, playing around with more proportions. Very crazy. Very impossible. Uh, not actually very strong, because mm, this guy would collapse. But whatever. Art is for, in my opinion, I'm trying to make things look cool, not correct. Um, but cool and not bothering you, because there's a difference. <clears throat> there's stuff that looks wrong, but it bothers you, and there's stuff that looks wrong, but it somehow it's okay, it's not a bother. Uh, like this. This face, yeah, it's cool. You know, to me anyway, it doesn't look that wrong. I notice there's a generational gap, like, older people might look at this and, um, by older, I don't mean, you know, in their 40s or 50s, because I guess in their 70s now. Um, I remember when I was, you know, 10 or 20 years ago, hearing older people talk about anime, and they would talk about, like, people who were 30 or 40, and like, why are the eyes so big? This doesn't make any sense. Nobody's got eyes that big. Um, so, 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 so. Oh, and I added a block here because... I wanted to include perspective more, so it feels more grounded. Just to remind myself, like, this is a thing, remember this. Remember, don't lose this. Because the more you learn after a while, it, it's like you have this huge library full of books, but you don't even remember what the books are about. So every once in a while, it's like, open up, uh, take one of those books and look through them, and oh yeah, it's about that thing, I remember. Um, so here, okay. More figures, ah, it's getting a bit stiff, it's getting a bit boring, just doing the pose in the same, or the body, just straight up, whatever, okay, give some pose, give some gesture. Uh, different gestures, this one's weak because of the silhouette. So, if you viewed this image, and you just filled in all this, so it was like a shadow, you wouldn't know what's going on, or it would be very difficult to understand what's going on. Therefore, the silhouette is bad, and it needs to be worked on. Um, I didn't work on it, but I should have. And here's this guy, he's cool, I like him, I like his proportions. And you see, 
by doing these crickets, I'm becoming much more comfortable with this, with my big proportion. This is super important. So if you are struggling with proportion, drawing often and drawing smaller and getting, okay, it looks good small, you can draw this fine in a smaller format, then enlarge it. And it usually is much easier to enlarge it. Um, and I'm also liking these figures a lot more. Like, this one's kind of a stupid pose, doesn't make sense, but I don't hate it. Um, this guy, like, okay, whatever, sure. And this person, yay, <laughs> I like her pose, and she's got a purse, and uh, anyway, I think it's nice. And then these are just whatever. So these ones I get tired at the end, and I'm so tired that I can't even lift the pen off the page, so I just put the pen on the page and it's one continuous line to make the face it's just even this one continuous line blue 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 um, this one's nice and this one's cool and the hair is not awful because I usually draw hair and have a lot of trouble with it and I will have more trouble with it and then I thought okay so take her and do her in a different view and okay more cricket. So I'm doing this, and I felt the poses. Let's try poses again. And oh, this is very weak. And this is a stronger silhouette, I guess, because you, if you made this all dark, you would be able to see what she's doing. But it's not a very purposeful pose. Like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, this person's holding a crossbow, as is evident. I like my um, critiques because I feel I'm very bad at critiques and often when I start a critique I'll just start saying what it is like here we have a girl and she's standing and holding a crossbow like yeah yeah dude we know that and she's standing and looking towards yes holding a crossbow we we get it we get it we get it um, I don't know Okay, so this guy exists, and what do you think he thinks about? I don't know, but I like him, and um, I don't know, I'm having a lot more fun. This guy's arms like open up, and he has a helmet that opens up, I guess like Iron Man kind of, um, and this guy's wearing clothes from like Affinity and stuff, and this is a... I was trying to draw a silhouette. I like this lady as well. I did a small version of her and a bigger version. Um, but trying to make a cool silhouette. So, okay, that looks cool. And then, fine, but fill it in and try and put a body in there because you should be able to. And it's the same with um, all these things. Like, you see this? Okay, it's a crazy proportion, but it has to have anatomy that works. It has to have underneath it a skeleton that works, that makes sense. Um, here's another one of the continuous line thingies. Mm, more drawing. This pose isn't very good. But, uh, it's awkward, but it's like, okay, some of it's working. I like this girl's face a lot. Um, the folds are eh, but whatever. And this figure is nice. And I like this guy. He's got like a mask, and then there's feathers coming out. And it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. These figures weren't well thought out. But it's just like, yeah, what, a, what about this idea? Put it down anyway. And again, experimenting with different body types. Um, I like this girl because she has a mohawk. And that seems nice, nice shapes. What I find is when I do um, bigger women, I like to make the hair big as well to balance it out. I don't know. And here's Ro. Here's another continuous line thing. And some person who's younger, but I don't know. I actually really like this one. And it's weird because since they're small, they're easy to get lost. And it's like, oh, this is really cool. This one's pretty cool. And you see, I'm liking my work more now. So you don't have to worry when you're like, ah, oh, you're too hard on yourself. No, I'm only hard on myself when I'm terrible. And if I improve a little bit, I'll knees up. Um, this person I like because 
I remember that I came from doing, well, I started doing realism, um, portraiture and stuff, and then I did caricature, and then I did my, and now I'm working on my style. Um, but my style isn't just, uh, you know, draw people with super skinny waists and stuff. It's also the caricature thing, but I know that I can't get into that too soon before I understand my shapes. So it might seem obsessive to, you know, why do you keep doing this and the same thing over and over again and obsessing over shapes. And here I did a bigger woman and I wanted to draw a smaller woman inside her to make sure I know that, I don't know, you know, fat is on top of bones and muscles and the bones and the muscles aren't going to change that much unless you work out the muscles, but um, the fat's going to be on top of that. Uh, so what was I talking about? I don't remember. But anyway, it was something. And hey, look, more crickets. I really like this one. It's cool. And I was doing this stream with Concept Cookie, um, Tim, Tim Von Rieden, and uh, we had to do a witch. And I did this witch, so this was October 29th. And then I just turned this sketch into a more finished thingy. And um, yeah, I like this one too. I thought this one was a decent idea as well. Um, moving on. So more poses. Uh, I drew this one, I think, first. And it's like, that is really wrong. There's no foreshortening. I should have used my coil technique. So then here it's a little better. It's still not great. Floating guy. And flying, like whoo, jumping, and then sort of psh, flying, floating person as well. I like drawing flying people. Don't know why, but I like drawing flying people. And this person's like blah, blah, and uh, this person, yay, floating as well, cool. Um, and here you see two pages now. That's nice. We're doing two pages. And this thing, I don't know what it is, but I kind of like the idea. I feel like, man, eh, it's somewhat appealing. Whatever it is, don't know what it is, but mm, this thing, whoa, it's very stretched, and I like that. I like how pushed it is. I'm sort of like with the style, I want to get more of this, more of this quality, this push thing, but realizing that there's a time and a place for everything, and you don't want to sacrifice your foundation. So in when it comes to this style, the most foundational aspect is a basic shape language. That is the most important thing. After that, proportion, anatomy, you got to make sure that's correct. Then you can worry about um, gesture, posing, um, composition, clothing, folds, gravity other objects, environments, stuff like that. But in the beginning, the shapes are important. And I'm applying it to a human figure because that's what I like to draw, right? It doesn't make sense to do things you don't like to do in order to get better. It's like, do what you like to do and get better at that. Um, here I just did a baby thing and a child thing and other things and... I think this is like a little bit inspired by Cloud, or it's supposed to be Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. And a continuous line thing. And here we have some more. Um, don't like this pose at all. It feels very awkward. But this is cool. I like the shapes in it. And some of these are okay. I guess I was looking at more down shots on this day, because this one's a down shot, this one's a down shot, this is looking down. Um, I wanted to draw a girl that was like just kicking, but it's really bad in the silhouette and doesn't look like it, and it's like, so the idea in, my back of, in the back of my mind is I gotta work on this type of thing later more. Um, but I like this person a lot. It's, I don't know what's going on. As I said before, uh, I go crazy with hair. But I thought that was fairly cool. And here I did three pages. I think this is the first time I did three pages, so that's cool. I'm pumping up my productivity. And 
Um, I was drawing somebody in this pose, like looking up, and I realized, oh, I don't know how to do that, so, okay, do it again, try it again, try it again, try it again. And this isn't something I used to do. This is very new. Um, but I realized, like, okay, so I give these a, this advice in my videos, like, well, you know, if I was how to practice drawing, for instance, and, oh, do the same pose many times. And it's important for me to follow my own advice. And um, I think it's also important to allow yourself to be a beginner. Because when it comes to painting, and if someone said, okay, do a painting and make it look almost photorealistic and whatever, I think I would be okay at that. I would be decent at it. But if they said, you know, draw this cool style and these cool poses and stuff, I would have a lot more difficulty. And I think sometimes when artists get beyond a certain point where they're competent in one field, the tendency is to stick to that field, to be like, well, you know, maybe this isn't exactly what I want to do, but I would be really bad if I tried something that's too far out of my comfort zone. And instead it's like, allow yourself to be a beginner. So I think of myself as a beginner, and here I'm doing ears because I thought, okay, I had this thing where I was drawing ears and they didn't have a great shape the same way that the head was, but also they had this more diamond quality and I wanted to kind of get out of it. And I thought, well, how am I going to break a habit? Well, okay, so let's say I have this bad habit. Okay, break it by replacing it with a good habit. You can't just stop a habit. You, the way you end a habit is to replace it with another habit. Um, hopefully one that's more healthy. So here I was, you know, ears, 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 ears blah, 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 lots of ears. And fixing my muscle memory. Because a lot of drawing is, like drawing is split into two parts. One part is the part you control. It's the, maybe the more left brain side where I'm pretty comfortable um, in terms of analysis and figuring stuff out. And then there's the right brain side um, with the visual memory and all that, which I'm not that good at. Um, it doesn't mean I, because uh, it's hard. Um, I read a comment in my last video of someone who thought I was, I should uh, just, you know, not fo not keep saying I don't have a visual memory because that's what's holding me back. Ho thinking that I don't is why I don't. Um, no, it's not that simple. Um, because I can't remember faces of people I want want to remember. And I've always had this problem with remembering faces, remembering things. Um, memory in general has been an issue for me. And it's not because I tell myself I have a bad memory. It's kind of like, yeah, I, have, I have a bad memory. I have to accept this but play to my strength. So, okay, so you have a bad memory. Well, then make it muscle memory. Make it something that you've just done over and over through repetition. Here's some more uh, different body types, and this girl has an axe, and I thought, okay, let's make them fight. And so she's doing an axe kick, and she has an axe. And um, then these two people were, like, wrestling or whatever, and I don't like this. I like the idea of this, like a dynamic pose, but it didn't come out right. Um, so, yep. Yeah. Mm, another three-page thing. This was, like, really awkward. Uh, the head is not really attached properly to the body and the pose. It just, it looks like you've taken a few different images and stuck them together, and the perspective of this is very different than this. And uh, it's like, okay, so try a different pose and getting things more correct. And this is really, like, okay, this. I cannot express how uncomfortable it is for me to show this. Like, ugh, I could erase this, and then this one's okay, this one's okay, this is, these are okay, and it's like, yeah, cool, people will see my good stuff, but um, ugh, I figure, okay, let me try and be honest and show you what's not working as well as what's working, so you don't get the idea that I don't struggle, because I do. Um... Yeah, this one's kind of nice. It's a bit wonky, but that's nice. I like this one as well. Um, and again, playing with more crazy proportions. And this one came out kind of like the um, the My Little Pony things. <laughs> um, this is uh, more crickets and... Oh, this! See, 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 see? 
skeleton. This is what I meant. You should be able to have crazy proportions, sure, but they should have... You should be able to do a skeleton. So what would a skeleton of these super pointy chin people look like? Mm, look something like that. Um, and I thought, good. Because you should be able to do this. It's not perfect by a long shot, but it's something you should be able to do. And really like this figure. And this person is really cool. Um, and... Uh, I guess this page isn't so great. Um, I had trouble with the screaming mouth thing. And that looks totally wrong. Mm. Mm. One of the problems with drawing in pen is we can't just easily erase and fix it. So it's like, okay, have to try again. And this one's better for sure than this one. This one's bad as well, I feel. Just looks really awkward. Where's this jawbone going? Like, okay, so the back of your jaw here is pushed into your cheekbone, that doesn't make any sense, whereas this is making a little more sense. Um, <laughs> some dragon thingy, and a bowling pin bird, and this guy with an eye patch, and yeah. Mm, this is only a two-page day, but I was thinking about that thing, right? The the screaming mouth thing. So, okay, so you have to draw a skull, and then the jaw is the only part that moves, and you'll have your teeth, and how do they fit within that? And because I can't use a pencil, or I'm not, I can't, but I didn't use a pencil, I have to draw it, and then draw another version, and then draw a version without the skull, but sort of imagining the skull underneath. And so it's like, okay, that's better. That's much better, in, in my opinion, uh, than the prior, previous day. That's better, that's better, that's okay, that's, yeah, it's better anyway, it's an improvement, and this helped, um, and da da da, more floating people, <laughs> um, oh yeah, and then I start drawing, I drew this person, um, cause, uh, they were wearing, I, I don't remember what I was watching, but I was watching something and the people were wearing these olden days dresses, or olden days, <laughs> I guess Victorian era dresses, um, and I realized, like, I haven't drawn clothes in a while, and so I'm just doing this from what I remember, and they have, like, a big butt thing coming out, and then I started looking at it, like, what if this was a creature? And people had these dresses, and first I simplified this, like, okay, so you take this, and then just like, boom, make it a much more simple shape. And I thought, oh, that kind of looks like a creature. And then I did this person with like a big dress, almost like a slug dress. And this is like the same idea, like it's a dress, but it's also like a slug trail, tail thingy. And um, I drew this person, and I thought, okay, so they're wearing this floating dress. Well. Okay, so if this is a real dress, what's it going to be like when this, uh, when she's touching the ground? Oh yeah, it's going to crunch, and how thick is it going to be? And um, this person in this pose, and then what would they look like from the other side? I'm not sure if it's correct, but like, whatever. Uh, it's a try. It's an attempt. And this person, look, look more up. What's that like? Um, so yeah, a lot of experiments and just some people from the gym, I think. Um, this was November 3rd, so I think, I don't know, I was still in Vancouver. Because right, I went to Romania, then I went back to Vancouver, and then I'm back in Romania, and I've been in Romania ever since. So I think this was when I was still in Vancouver. Um, boop, 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 boop. This guy is really cool. So stuff like this is like, man, that's good, that's good, that's where I want to be with the style thing. I want to have a range where I can do sort of like <clears throat> this type faces, but also this type faces and make them fit in the same world. And because it's getting more pointy, it's like, sure. But even at this point, I haven't figured out my basic shape language. So remember I said the foundation thing. The first thing <clears throat> I need to have 
even before good proportions and good anatomy, is a good shape language, um, more ears. And I don't have that yet, and I don't think I'll get that in this episode, but there's, there's <laughs> me, and there's Bob Meatbag, and <laughs> I, I tried to draw um, Bob, and uh, it didn't really capture his expressions so I thought I'll do one that I get more in terms of my feeling of Bob as a person and that one is more how I feel towards him even though that might not be what he looks like anyway and then this boy is wearing a cowboy thingy and uh, this person again I like this person I like their shapes it gets very messy. I'm sorry if it's hard to see. Um, uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Yeah, uh, this character is... Uh, Bob has a character called Jacques Noir, and I tried to do it in my thing, and didn't turn out that good. And I like this girl. Um, I don't know why, but something's working. So, uh, there's something I like about it. And this person is, uh, I think I was doing Gully from Battle Chasers, but again in my style and from memory, so there's probably errors in terms of how it looks, and I would do it differently now, but hey, it's an attempt. Um, what else? Okay, more stuff, more stuff. Um, hands, arms, this guy expressions remembering that I car I need to caricature my figures cannot all be the same and okay so try that mm, try like an older person and more attempts um, so this one I did kind of I wanted to do a girl and she gets older but she also puts on weight and so it's like okay so maybe she was more skinny when she was really young, and then she's more heavy when she's um, older. I don't know if it looks right. And also the hair is very crazy, which I kind of like. Um, and this guy with big ears. And <laughs> it's, it's kind of annoying how the images I like the most tend to be these type of simple images that I'm not really working on, and then this stuff is like, yeah, I like it, it's appealing, but it's more empty, I guess, just the expressions. There's less expression, and trying more crazy hair, and this person with their arm raised, which didn't work, didn't work at all. Um, this is a bit better in terms of the anatomy, um, but again, it's doing it a few times. And, okay, I was trying to draw someone from the back from this view and I realized like I'm kind of not good with this view let's see more and more uh, still not working okay try some more uh, try some more uh, try some more try some more try some more until it gets better because that's what it's about it's about you know trying and and here I am trying to develop the shape language so there's a flower sack that's very common in animation um, if you go to animation school, you pretty much have to deal with this when you're studying classical animation. It's like a, a flower sack, and it's a bean-shaped body. And then I thought, okay, so how do I make that in my style? How do I make normal things in a more pointy style? And so they get more appealing, but they retain their quality. And I was struggling a lot with this. And I thought, okay, what about a teardrop? How would I do a teardrop? It's like, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, so again, doing it over and over again. Try trial and error. Try on trial and error. All these are experiments. It's it's the only way I'm gonna learn is if I refine it. So I started here, and it's like, okay, so this is a shape. Cool. Make it cooler. Make it more appealing. And maybe this is to some people OCD. Like, why, why, why are you doing this? It's so much extra stuff. And it's because I want to be great as an artist. It's, maybe it's never going to happen, but it's something I want. I want to be great. And 
there's a big difference between good and great. And it's something that I notice a lot of people don't even see. And it bothers me. Um, because with Kim Jong-gi, for instance, he is great. As far as I have seen, he is the greatest living artist of our time and one of the greatest artists of all time. And then there are people who are good. And they're very good, maybe. But they're not as great. But then they sometimes clump the good artist with the great artist as if it's the same thing. But often the difference between a good artist and a great artist is the same as a difference between an, a bad artist and a good artist. Like, there can be this much of a gap. Um, and so I feel what makes you great is that you aren't satisfied with good enough. You're like, okay, this is good. But is it the best? Is it the best shape? Is it the best way of doing this? And if you're aiming for that, you're more likely, even if you fail, because hey, n nobody's perfect, right? You're never going to be perfect. But if you aim for perfection, you're going to be closer to whatever that untouchable perfect is than someone who just aimed for, eh, it's good enough, it's okay. Um, so yeah, trying to make the shape more appealing. And same thing here. Torso, take this shape and then make it more sharp. And see here, this is actually closer to the shape I ended up with. But it's interesting to see this early, or for me anyway, it's still interesting to see my earlier uh, trials where it's not working and like this. It's like, okay, sure, when it's rounded, I can really see this much more clear. And then when it's sharp, it's like, what happened here? So then it's like, okay, that's completely wrong. You've lost a gesture. This has one clean gesture. You cannot lose the gesture and make it all pointy like this. That doesn't work. So, okay, start with the gesture again. This is much more accurate. This is a pointy version of this, whereas this is a pointy version of nothing, of just blah. So, um, again, playing around with more of this flower sack. Okay, what happens when it twists? Um, gravity falls and it stretches and then it squashes and um, this one is like because this one felt like yeah he's maybe jumping and this one's sort of floating or doing like a slam dunk and uh, but it doesn't look like it's falling so it's like more falling but even this I, I'm not happy with I would fix this I would make it more like a teardrop shape if I was to redo it um, so yeah that's why that happened and this is trying to get the uh, like the twist again from this like trying to look at what I learned from this and apply it to a figure because uh, that's why these these flower sacks exist they actually represent the torso and it's supposed to anyway in animation help you to understand the torso the rib cage and the pelvis um, more ears because hey I don't want to forget it and not just that I think it's often it's a case of like see this one it's too rounded. So probably what happened is I drew this ear and it's like, I know I caught myself. You're going back to your old habit instead of the new habit you were trying to replace it with. Okay, get a bunch of ears down and then it gets easier to go back to, see? Now it's getting more pointy again, more pointy. It's reminding myself um, of where I was trying to go. Mm, I like this figure, even though it's quite distorted. Um, uh, some affinity stuff where I was trying to make the characters older, and here's Ro when she's older. So, whatever. Whatever. And um, this is a character that I was trying to make hunched over and strong, but didn't work. But I like this shape, this character. It's like, I even like how the parts are all disconnected. Feels cool. I wanted to do curly hair, but make it all pointy. And how would I do that? And, okay, take a shape. And is it, it's appealing, mm, okay, make it in different angles and focus on appealing shapes. Um, and you'll see this shape, see? This shape starting to form. This is the thing that I kept revisiting later on. Um, but at this point, I haven't honed in on it. Again, this comma shape. Okay, you get, a, you get a basic comma. Okay, now how do you make it sharp? There are different ways of making it sharp. And these are just attempts. Like f This failed again. For the same reason that the uh, other beanbag failed. This shouldn't be there. You have to maintain the gesture. This is closer. Um, and... Yep. 
So here's a single page day. I tried to draw someone looking over their shoulder, and I guess today I was re or this day, uh, November 9th, 2014, I really wasn't feeling it because this is totally broken. And it's like, oh man. Um, and then this was like, what? Because I tried to, okay, let's try it again. Again, what? That is not right at all. So then it's like, okay, okay, we've, we've found a problem. Mm, you are really bad at this view. So, okay, try and revisit it, revisit it, revisit it. Failed, 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 failed. Okay, um, some different poses. Uh, this guy's whatever, but then revisiting it. Okay, is that better? It's better. Is it good? Nope. Is this good? Nope. Okay, revisit it. Try again. Try again. Try again. Try again. Not working. Try again. Eh, better, but still not working. Try again. Neck too long. This head isn't fitting on properly. The muscles aren't connecting right. Try again. It's a bit better. It's a bit better going in the right direction. Try again. Meh, nope. That didn't work at all. So, again, it's it's like... I will be only as good as... I allow myself to be before I quit, right? Because when you quit, like, if I just gave up here and said, nah, I can't figure it out, then I'm done. This is, that's my level. That's where I'll stay. But it's like, because before, this is exactly what I would have done. I would have drawn it and be like, ah, oh, I can't do this. Or I would have gone straight to reference and looked at reference and, okay, how do I do it? But I want to figure it out because what I want to do is, I know I can figure it out if I just try hard enough. It's like, you can figure it out. And something I tell myself is, I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's like, cynics would be able to do this. Damn cynics, he'd be able to figure this out, so I should be able to figure it out. Um, anyway, <laughs> I like cynics. Um, so here, uh, again, trying it out. Nope, so this day, eh, didn't quite figure it out. Okay, try again. Nope, not working, not working. Again, going to some refreshers of just the figure. Another day. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, man. All right. Not working again. Man. Okay, this is a bit better. It's getting better. This is actually like a few steps back. Um, fail. Try again. Fail. 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 Fail, 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 fail. Mm, what's this? Oh, anyway, okay. Fail, but not as big of a fail. Fail, but not as big of a fail. Getting a bit better, getting a bit better. Okay, that looks about right. That's better. Fine. You've, you've, you've gotten it. Finally. Yes, this isn't great, but it's better. Okay. Getting better, yes. Sure, pretty good. Eh, I think this is good. Mm, still, whatever. Mm, better, 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 better. Okay. Be better. Pretty good. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Good. Wah. Meh. Broken. But, again, learning, right? So, here's the thing. Let's say I draw this, and I just draw this pose, and you haven't seen my sketchbook. And then you're like, oh, you're good at drawing all the poses. It's like, am I really good at drawing all the poses? I don't think I'm really good at drawing all the poses. I think I have a lot of trouble. But, like, see this one. It's fine. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's just, you have to see the behind-the-scenes stuff to realize, like, this isn't easy. Um, there's a lot of failures. Um, this is a thing where I thought, I haven't done a, I haven't done an image in a while, so, uh, I mean, a, like a composition, and I, I told you, I'm going to, going in order of getting the body down, nailing that, then going to a composition. Uh, there's this book I really like uh, by Josh Waitzkin called The Art of Learning, and in it, he talks about how uh, he practiced a single punch over and over again, just the basic punch, but n try to get it perfect. 
Whereas everyone else, like, your punch is okay, your kicks are okay, your this is okay, your that, you're, you're going from thing to thing to thing to thing without perfecting it, without getting it really strong. And with him, he's like, I'm going to nail the perfect thing. Once he got the thing perfected, he improved so much faster than, than his competitors. And um, for people who might think, like, is this worth it? Is this just a waste of time? All I can say is, I don't know. I'm, an, I'm experimenting, right? And I'm saying things in my videos, like, you should do multiple versions of the same thing. You should get it right. And now it's just, okay, I'm telling other people this. Does it work for me? I have to try it. Um, and if it works, then my method has merit. It has value. And if it doesn't, then you will benefit anyway, because I will fail, and you will be able to see that, okay, this technique that Psychra is talking about doesn't work, I shouldn't use it, or maybe he did it wrong. Um, and I wish you the most success. Like, learn from me, surpass me, whatever, that's fine. But... Um, I have to see if I'm right first. I have to try this. Uh, and I think I have... <sighs> like, I feel like I'm onto something, but it's only going to show in the end if my result is good. If my if in the end I say... Like, if I say I want a cool style, and I don't have a cool style, and I have a lame style, and in the end I get, like, a really, really, really cool style, then fine, I was right. And if I don't, then I was wrong. Um, but anyway... Okay, so trying some more flower sacks and um, arms, trying different shapes and what looks cool. And this is, this is not correct anymore, but it's just appealing. Focusing on appeal um, and just doing some ellipses because why not? Just good for uh, muscle memory. Mm, this neck is very long. Maybe too long. Probably too long. And then this, I was doing something where I'm still trying to figure out that shape, that shape language. And I figure, like, I like this figure. That's cool. Very skinny, very tall, very weird. Um, here, still some weird anatomy. Um, but anyway, I, I thought, like, okay, I should be able to draw any shape and make it appealing. And then I started to think of a bug head. Like, um, the head of an ant or of, of, of a wasp or something. And it's like, okay, let's say you're designing that. And you just have the proportion of the head and the eye. What is the most appealing head and eye you can have? So it's like experiment. And these don't look like ants. And Oh, maybe it was a, a bee or a wasp or something. But it was just, it's not really about the wasp. It's more about the proportion and the shapes and finding a language it's like okay so this this looks okay is this the coolest what if i stretched it what if i made it more tall um and here's an eye whatever more eyes but yeah what if i make this part really big and this really thin and push to the top what if i make the eye really big and push it to this way and how do i maintain a good positive to negative space ratio and trying again and trying and trying this isn't working see like to me this is not as appealing as this even though this is but this looks like very meaty and big and and then there's this like what if i stretch this long and like which ones are more appealing but again it might seem stupid uh, this one's okay but it's and and this one i like but it's a it's a thing where it's like i don't want to just be okay i want to be really really good if I am this, if I am really in charge of my shapes, if I'm really good at appeal, I should be able to do this. This shouldn't be hard. Um, and so it's still sort of hard. And so, you know, still need more work. But the next episode, it's cool because I finally find my shape language that I was searching for all this time. And the crickets were a big help. And they helped me get to this, so stay tuned for the next episode of Pointy Chin.